I'm feeling a little bit experimental inside of Apple Motion, so we're gonna create this art piece effect which can be applied onto anything over inside of Final Cut Pro. If you're a patron, you can download this project file as well as a hundred plus others. All of that's linked down below if you're interested. Now for this specific project, I wanted it to be a title which we could use as an adjustment layer over in Final Cut. Let's set our duration to 10 seconds and you can set your frame rate to whatever you typically like to work with over in Final Cut Pro. From there, we'll push open. The first thing we need to do is delete the type text here layer. We are going to keep the title background this time around. So let's check this box enabling the title background. This is going to enable the effect to apply to anything underneath it inside of Final Cut. Now to make this more visual so we can clearly see what the effects are doing, I'm gonna go ahead and import an image. You do not need to do this, but it does make your life a bit easier. So I'm just gonna drag this image onto the title background and that should swap it out. So now we can see how the effects are being applied. The first thing we need to do to apply this effect is add a Gaussian blur. That's going to make everything mixed together. So we'll go up to filters, blur, and then select Gaussian Blur. Go over to your inspector on the left side and you can drag that up. You'll probably need to have it at a pretty significant level. After that, we need to add in a posterize effect which is going to remove a lot of the colors that are in the scene. So we'll go up to filters, we'll go to stylize and select posterize. And over here on the left side, you can see the levels are set to five. I happen to like how eight looks, but it's really up to you. And you can see how that's really degrading our image but it's giving us these nice lines that look kind of like an art piece. Now we wanna add some 3D dimension to this piece and that's where the next effect comes into play. Selecting the title background, we'll go to filters, stylize, and this time we're going to select indent. You'll see how the indent effect is actually making each of these lines look like they have some 3D depth to them. Coming over to the left side, you can adjust all sorts of stuff like the softness so we can make them a lot thicker if we want to. We can adjust the brightness, the ambience. We can even adjust the light direction, which is really cool. I like where the default is, so I'll leave it as is. Now, one thing you might notice here is the edges are a bit darkened and they're getting a lot of that indent effect, which you may or may not like. If you don't like it, you can always go to your Gaussian blur and enable crop. This is going to essentially repeat the edges of the effect and that's going to solve that issue. One last thing I might add is a nice bit of texture. So selecting our title background, we'll go to filters, stylize, and this time we'll select add noise. Going over to the left side, I'm gonna change the type over to pink noise, and I'm going to set that as monochrome to get rid of that color fringing that it adds. We can change the blend mode over to overlay, which is my personal favorite for this effect. And last but not least, we'll disable the auto animate just so that texture is baked in. So this effect looks super cool, but now we want to animate it. And we could easily go in and manually animate each of these objects, but that doesn't give us a whole lot of flexibility over in Final Cut Pro. If we wanna change any of these parameters, adding keyframes to an animation makes things quite difficult. So instead, we're gonna use some powerful link parameters to be able to animate all of this. To set this up, let's go ahead and create essentially a null object, which is not affecting the scene in any way, but we can link these different parameters to that null object. To do so, we'll go over to our library, we'll go to generators and just locate any generator you like. I like how this color solid works and we can apply it into the scene. Now we have no reason to actually see this color solid, so I'll just disable the visibility on both the group and the color solid. And we could just call this null or whatever you really wanna call it. We could even call this the link group because inside of this group, we're gonna be linking a lot of various effects. Now that we've done that, we need to select all of the various effects we've applied to the title background and then push Command C to copy and select our null object and push Command V to paste. You could go in and rename each and every one of these objects to get rid of the copy title. I don't really mind it, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. From there, we need to select the original effects applying to our title background. We'll go over to our inspector on the left-hand side and locate each of the effects here in our filters. The first thing we want is of course the amount on our Gaussian blur. You'll see that I can drag this around and that really changes the effect quite a bit. Coming over to the right side, we'll click this down arrow, select add parameter behavior 
and we're going to, of course, link it. Let's rename this to be link Gaussian, and we'll go up to the null object and drag that into the source object well. So now we're telling motion what we want to link to. It still doesn't quite know what we want though. It knows that we're looking at this particular object, but we need to tell it what effect to copy over. So in this example, we need to copy the Gaussian blur amount. Under our source parameter, we'll change compatible parameters, go down to filters, locate the Gaussian blur copy, and then select amount. This Gaussian blur copy is driving the amount of our original Gaussian blur effect. So I'll select that Gaussian blur copy, and if I adjust it, you'll see how that's actually changing our painting, even though it's applied to an invisible layer. So I'll just set this back up to somewhere around 250. But we don't want this effect to be instantaneous. We want it to slowly animate over time. And that's why the link parameter is just so cool. Selecting our link Gaussian parameter behavior, we'll go over to the left side and locate the mix over time option. Change it from custom mix over to ease in and out. Right now, the original value of our Gaussian blur is set to 233, and we definitely don't want that. But you'll notice that as I move forward, it adjusts up to 250, which is the new Gaussian blur level. So let's take our playhead back to the very beginning before the link is being applied and just drag that amount down to zero. Then as we move forward, you'll see that that instantly jumps up to 250 and you can see how that effect is taking place on our painting. So now we just need to link each of the individual parameters and these will auto animate for us, which is incredibly handy. So let's do the same thing with posterize. Right now it's set to a value of eight. Let's actually drag this all the way up to 255 so that the colors look exactly as they should originally. Click this down arrow add a parameter behavior, then select link. We'll drag in our null object. We'll go to compatible parameters, filters. This time we're going to select posterize copy and we're going to select levels. Now it is immediately jumping to that new value of eight under our posterize effect here. So we need to have it animate. So to do that, we'll go to our link parameter we've created and I'll actually just call this link posterize so we clearly know what we're working with. Then we'll go to the left side under mix over time and change this to ease in and out. And now over 10 frames, it will slowly adjust to that new value giving us this really nice effect. Let's do the exact same thing for the indent effect. So for this, we wanna adjust the actual mix slider. So we'll drag it down to 0%, which is the original value we wanted at. Click this down arrow, add parameter behavior, link. We'll drag in our null effect and we'll tell motion what we want to link. So filters, indent, and mix. Then we need to change the custom mix over to ease in and ease out. And so now over time, that effect will slowly apply, which is looking super nice. And last but not least, we need to do the same thing with our noise. So we'll select add noise. We'll find the mix slider, drag that to 0%, click the down arrow, add parameter behavior, link, drag in the null, find compatible parameters, filters, add noise. We need to go to mix over time, select ease in and out. And now pushing play, you can see how that animates in just like so. But I'm finding that this is just way too fast and I wanna slow this animation down to about a second. Now I'm working on a 60 frame per second timeline. You are going to need to change these values based on the frames per second you set. If you want it to be one second on a 60 frame per second timeline, we need to change the mix time range over to a value of 60, that'll be 60 frames. And now we just need to do that for each of these individual parameters. And again, if you're on a 30 frame per second timeline, that would be 30, if you're on a 24, that would be 24. So now this animation will take place over 60 seconds, lock into place, and then at the very end, it'll dissipate. Now there's one last thing we need to make sure we do before we send this over to Final Cut Pro, and that is to lock in the timing. So to do so, we'll just come in about one second to the end of the animation. We'll push Shift M to add a marker. We'll double click on that marker, change the type from standard over to build in optional. So now we have the option of choosing whether or not we want this to actually animate in over inside of Final Cut Pro, or if we want the effect to just instantly be turned on. But more importantly, this also locks in the timing for this first second of the animation. Let's move our playhead to the very end in the last second where the animation will start to dissipate. We'll push Shift M, add a marker, 
double click that marker and change the type from standard over to build out optional. After that, we can push OK. And so we have that last second of animation working really well. If we want to make it so we can change each of these individual parameters over in Final Cut Pro for them to animate to, we need to locate each and every one of the copies that we created. Come over to the left side and we'll find this down arrow, then select publish. So I'll do that for the posterize effect. We'll do that for the mix slider and we'll do that for the mix slider on the add noise effect as well. From there, we can push command S to save and we can just call this posterized art or whatever you wanna call it. Throw it into a category of your choosing. I'm gonna throw it in my Patreon category and push publish. Now we can jump over to Final Cut Pro. We can go over to the top left under our titles, locate our FCB's Patreon, and we'll see our posterized art effect. I'm just gonna click and drag that down onto the timeline. And you'll notice that this is a completely new piece of art, but if we push play, it slowly turns into this really cool posterized effect. And I can even shorten that down and now it will go back to how it looked originally. If you're interested in checking out this very project file that I just created, make sure you check out my Patreon page down below that comes with not just this project, but also a hundred others that you can check out. Plus it comes with 30% off of all of my digital products on my store, including my Apple Motion Masterclass. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.